Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching the station identification of one of Whalen City's resident YouTubers. Live in the basement, this is not MTV's remote control, and he is not Ken Ober, God rest Ken Ober's soul. This is WEML-TV, channel 77, and now here's your host, New Bedford, Massachusetts' own Mr. Eric M. Lima. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Announcer. Hey, all you dudes and dudettes, welcome to WEML TV Channel 77. Eric Lima here, your host. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for the announcement, Mr. Announcer. And y'all know who the Mr. Announcer is. It's me. I just like I just like I like doing this just for fun. Uh, today will be Whammy Wednesday, so on the next episode, I'll be playing a little bit of this. Press your luck. That's right. That's his other shirt from eBay. Totally cool, huh? So, yeah, we we'll, um, like I said, you know, I did a couple of uh, live streams. I'm not going to do one today. Um, I figured that that's overdone. You know what I mean? It's one it's one of those things where you just, uh, you know, I figured, you know, want to get let everything out and all that. And it's not been the, it's not been the easiest times. This week's going to be a little crazy for me this week. Um, a lot's going on, you know, and possibly this summer is going to be a little bit more nuts for me. That's why... That's another reason why I decided to step, like I said, again, I stepped out of the both podcasts. Um, I stepped out as co-host of the Rant and Rave podcast. So you're never going to see me on there for a long time. So I'm going to try to take some time off to, you know, help out with the family just in case something arises coming out. I got my nephew come, come back today. Don't know what time, but I don't know if he's back already. Not only that, um, I don't know if he's back already. Not only that, uh, because of rehearsal being on Tuesday nights and, you know, that and plus the Hangman Outcast, uh, I'm not going to make any appearances on there as well. I know a lot of pe people have been asking questions, so um, the only thing, the only thing I will request is not do not do not from the Hangman Outcast and um, for the groups uh, for both the Hangman Outcast, uh, Hangman Charlie Outcast and Rent and Rave, I I request not to be tagged into any into any of their posts um, for like I said until further notice, so that I can focus on trying to get you know the summer together and all that. There's lots, lots going on. I want to make sure. It's been a very crazy week, to say the least. And, um, like I said, I need, need some, and plus, being fed up with the drama, I had to just say, cut ties for right now. I'm not, you know, mad at anybody, you know, just cut ties on the podcast. That way, I don't want to get any heat, per se. And I figured this was a fail-safe way to, you know, get out of it and, you know, and stay neutral and, Try to keep now um, keeping the peace will be. Um, I don't you know if I try to attempt to try to keep the peace between both groups, I may get end up da mentally damaged in the process, and I don't want that to happen to me. So, but um, be it as it may, I want to make sure that you know everything is uh you know I want to make sure that I try to be as mentally sane as possible. It's very very tough for me and my family uh, because my family's not normal. I, either way, we're all wacky people. We're all crazy, but we're having a lot of fun. And I think we're trying. We're trying to. Um, we want to be wacky and crazy in the positive way. And so I want. That's why I'm doing. I'm focusing on the show. This show only. That's what I'm focused on. If you don't have any questions, um, if you, and for those who have um, been watching both the Hangman Charlie Outcast and the Rent and Rape podcast over over the months, uh, if you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, you want a friend request me. I, um, or you want just want to message me, um. Uh, I'll be more than happy to talk to you guys and answer some questions. Um, so you can, uh, that way, you know, keep things, you know, keep things on a DL, so to speak. That way, you know, you understand where I'm coming from and why I didn't, uh, why I decided to make the decision I made. I get, you know, like I said, um, both uh, the main uh, parties in both groups understood why I'm doing this, and some people um, in the chat said, you know, no, they're understandable as well. And um, I'm do I am very very appreciative of that, um, so I am very very appreciative of that. And uh, but if for future reference, for right now, don't tag me in anything. Um, those in the Hangman Charlie's out, Outcast, the Creator Renegades, and the Network Community Rent and Rave, don't don't tag me in anything for right now. Um, I do appreciate that because I want to keep things on. On good terms with all of you, okay. So uh, that's why I decided to um, stay out of it. So you know, Von Baskin had this good idea of making my own podcast, but 
StreamYard, I'm, you know, uh, you can't afford a lot. Cause I want, you know, it would be great, but you know, I can't afford a lot of money right now, so it's like you know, can't afford it right now. So I want to make sure I can, I want to, you know, stick with YouTube for right now because YouTube's been been good. You know, uh, some people said, "Oh, take a break from social media and all that." You know, I thought about it, but then, but then again, it has been smooth sailing as far as you know. As long as I'm being trollless, I'm good. You know what I mean? You know, and plus, you know, I always come up. Uh, come up with a block or something like that. So, uh, Tom Atto, I kind of miss him. Um, I already miss him because I think he's a fun person to uh, talk to and chat with. So, Tom Atto or Tomato, and even though I don't like tomatoes in real life, but nonetheless, he's more than welcome to, um, you know, be part of my subscription page. Um, you know, and he's a Pokemon fan, so so I want to bring all the fun stuff. So, welcome again, Tomato. <laughs> Tom Atto. Or Tom Ato. That sounds like a Japanese name. Tom Ato. Ato could be a Japanese name. Who knows? Speaking of which, uh, we got a lot to get to. NXT. Because um, today is uh, June 23rd, 2021. 3.24 p.m. Press your luck tonight. Then Card Sharks follows that. Yep, two classic game shows from the 70s and 80s. Um, 70s and 80s in case Card Sharks. And the 80s. Press your luck. Back to back. Can't wait. Gonna have some fun with that. All right, Adam Cole came out to show up and cut a promo on Kyle O'Reilly, who I think it was in three weeks. They're going to have a match at um, the Bash, uh, the Great American Bash, and um, against Kyle O'Reilly. And then he addressed Samoa Joe, trying to put him to sleep last uh, last time. So anyway, so he goes, I was supposed to come out and pe- I was supposed to pick my own challenger, but you know I'm not going to do that. I'm going to issue an open challenge. And then Carmelo Hayes comes out. The formerly uh, the former Christian Casanova comes out. He goes, what are you doing here? What are you here for? And he go, and he said, well, there's an old saying. It's a familiar saying. It's called ruthless aggression. Gee, where do I heard that one before? From another Massachusetts wrestler by the name of John Cena. Slaps Adam Cole. The two have a matchup. It was a hard-fought matchup, but all, uh, but Adam Cole ultimately wins over all. That was a great matchup indeed. It was just too, too good. And then... Uh, then Frankie Nomine was talking to Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea. Could this be a shift where a new female faction could come in? Is Robert Stone going to, or is Robert Stone could hire Frankie Monet? Or just, you know, Robert Stone could expand with Frankie Monet? Could could Robert Stone be out in Frankie Nomine in to help out Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Because uh, they have a matchup against. Uh, uh, Io Shirai and Zoe Stark later on tonight. Speaking of which, Mackenzie Mitchell introduced Zoe Stark about you know and asked her why did she come to Io Shirai's aid. Zoe Stark says, "Hey, she got me started. Um, she was my first matchup. She made, she respects me, and he told her I want to you know help her out and pay her back." And then Io Shirai interrupts. She goes, "I like you." I know he goes, "I." She goes, "I respect you, but I don't like you." And then all of a sudden, you know, Zoe Stark had no problem with it. Mutual respect. I'll, I'll take that. <clears throat> then L.A. Knight was sitting at uh, his poolside with the million dollar title and dissing Ted DiBiase and Cameron Grimes to the moon. I like Cameron Grimes. And L.A. Knight should be ashamed of himself. He's a dummy. He disrespected Ted DiBiase. He's a disgrace to the million dollar title. Cameron Grimes is going to beat you for that belt. And he, he's going to... Uh, dummy, yeah. Let me talk to you. Yeah. I will talk to you, all right, freaking L.A. Knight. Hope you, hope you, you hope this, hope you're in a night that is a loser, just like those four Vegas Golden Knights. The only thing is, the Vegas Golden Knights have more class than L.A. Knight, dummy. Yeah, and then uh, Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory came out of the way to cut a promo on Karrion Cross. Johnny Gargano says, "New management, new champion." Right? Cause I think it, so. Anyways, um, they were running their mouths. That Pete Dunne and Orny Lurkin came out, and then. And then the and then both Gargano and Theory says, you know what? We'll step out of your way, right? And then Austin Theory decided to do foolishly talk trash to Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne grabbed two of Austin Theory's fingers and broke them. Austin Theory's crying about it. Oh. So, so there's that. Cameron Grimes. Speaking of which, I arrived at CWC, um, giving money away. You know, talking nice to the people. And then Ari Sterling decided to run his mouth. He's saying, you thought Grandpa DiBiase? And then Cameron Grimes punched him. I was like, good. Good. I think Ari Sterling should learn respect for the Hall of Famer Ted DiBiase. I met Ted DiBiase. He was really cool. 
And then, and then Mackenzie Mitchell went to uh, interview Adam Cole about his matchup and everything else. And and then Regal, Regal was confronting Cole about what happened. And he said, you know, Cole goes, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I don't even want to be here. I'm leaving. Fine. And then the way um, Den complains to Regal about Dunn and Larkin, Regal sets up a tag team matchup. Uh, Regal sets a tag team matchup between Oni Larkin and Pete Dunn, which is a very devious team, against uh, the ways Johnny Gagano and Austin Theory. And then they had the women's tag team matchup. Uh, Zoe Stark and Io Shirai going up against uh, Aaliyah and Jesse Commander Robert Stonebrand. Uh, team SNS, as I like to call them. Uh, Shirai and Stark won the match. But then um, Candice LeRae, the female version of the way, Candice LeRae and Indy Hotwell, the women's tag team champions, uh, um, shows up during the matchup. But then after the victory, after the matchup, uh, Ray, uh, Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai shows up, start talking trash to Shirai and Stark. And then Sh uh, NW Will and Shanti Blackheart show up, and they said, hey, we're about to kick everyone's butt. So all three, it looks like, you no. Know, all three women's teams were brawling, and I, I remember Samoa Joe walking walking by trying to get get everything straight with security. And the way he says we're backing out of this one. All three all three teams were brawling, and that will lead up to a triple threat match next week. And I think whoever fate, whoever wins the uh, match will wins that matchup. A triple threat match between Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, Io Shrine and Zoe Stark, not Tony Stark. What am I saying? Zo Tony Stark. I'm thinking of it. Uh, Iron Man, Zoe Stark, and then you got Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. Whoever wins that match will fit, probably face the way um, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell for the women NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. I think at the Grand American Bash. So, and then they had so speaking of the way, their their job is not done. Um, Only Lorcan and Pete Dunn won them against the the male way team of Gargano and Austin Theory. Johnny Gagan, Austin Theory did pick up the victory after a hard-fought match. You know, Lorcan and Dunn are two are two mean dudes, man. You don't really want to step in a dark alley with them. And Pete Dunn, the he has a penchant of breaking people's fingers. Oh man, it's creepy. And after the match, Johnny Gagan did got blindsided by the NXT champ Karrion Cross. So it seems like it's setting up between Karrion Cross and uh, and Johnny Gargano, will that happen at the Grand American Bash? Who knows for sure. Then there's another promo about a charger on a phone. Like a phone charger, battery charger. Who is it this time? You know? And who 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 is it this time? I just, you know, I really don't know. And then Samoa Joe confronted Karrion Cross, And then Karrion Cross reminded him, you can't touch me unless provoke. He goes, go ahead, champ. And then Scarlet. Scarlet, um, Scarlet just gave him like a Samoa Joe like a dirty look. I'm like, oh boy, don't do it, Scarlet. Don't do it. Just walk away. Just walk away. And then Pete Dunn confronts Samoa Joe. Pete Dunn wants to. I said, provoke him. I want to see Pete Dunn and Samoa Joe go one on one. I want to see that matchup. I want to see that matchup. Well, then, um, the, a lovely lady by the name of Electra Lopez was making her debut. Electra Lopez. When I saw, I'm like, oh my gosh, she is fine. She, um, she's formerly known as. Car um, Carissa Rivera in the indie scene. And she was shaking her hips. I'm like, Shakira, eat your heart out, sister. I'm telling you. Um, went up against Frankie Monet. A hard fought match, but bon Monet won with the gl Glam Slam. Her version of the Glam Slam. Known as the Road to Valhalla, but it is a Glam Slam. Glam Slam. And end up uh, picking up the victory over Electra Lopez. I like Electra Lopez. She's gorgeous. She's hot. She's fine. Hopefully she uh, stays around in NXT. Mackenzie Mitchell was interviewing Bronson Reed. I think Bronson Reed's trying to address the North American title situation. He knows that Santos Escobar wants a piece of him. But then Hit Row was interrupted. <laughs> and, and then Hit Row... Uh, Hit Row was, uh, was fun. And it looks like they're, they're disrespecting Bronson Reed. And I think Isaiah Square Scott's eyeing the North American title. So... Bronson Reed knows he's got a target on his back with Santos Escobar and Isaiah Swerve Scott. Anything is possible there. Speaking of Hit Row, Ever-Rise. I love these guys. They're entertaining, but what the heck were they thinking? Right, Ever-Rise got a little ticked off because their little house got wrecked by Hit Row. I don't blame, blame Ever-Rise. So what does Ever-Rise try to attempt to do? 
<laughs> they vandalized the SUV they drove in. And he said, they make making fun of Top Dollar, call him Dollar King. <laughs> and, like, and they're looking at the seat. Nobody's okay. They're about to spray paint. Rendell Wells down this Top Dollar sitting right there. He looks at them because, you know, ski masks don't work if, if, if you have the shirts. And Verizon, God bless him. They tried to take it to run. I'm like, dudes, you should have worn different shirts. You should have, this is the worst disguise is ever. You're wearing a ski mask. You got Everrise Rules shirts. I love these shirts, but guys, you got to come up with a better plan than that. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Um, guys, uh, ski masks don't work if you have if we we know, if we know the shirts. Look, crap! Let's get out of here. Now, Everrise, most entertaining tag team in NXT. I love Everrise. Everrise rules. I'm the friend of the shirt and the friend of the show. And guess what? Unfortunately, I think Hit Row is going to get Chew of the Week again. That's my personal opinion. Speaking of Hit Row and Everrise, they went at it. Hit Row went top dollar and Ashante Diadamas. And talk about Thunder Lightning t combination. Ashante Diadamas was part of the Cruiserweight division, so he's got a lot fast. I don't know if he's um, going to be beyond the Cruiserweight division now. Um, I think he's the only one with, with the 205. 205, but he's got a lot of quickness and speed. Top dollar with the power and strength. And I'll tell you, and Hit Row did win the matchup. They brutalized Everrise. So hopefully Everrise will be okay. I'm sure they'll become... And they said they're going to move to YouTube, which I can't wait. I cannot wait for them to be on YouTube. It's going to be great. It's going to be totally freaking awesome. And it's going to be totally freaking awesome. Everrise on YouTube. Everrise rules. Friend of the shirt. Friend of the show, baby. That's what, that's what I'm... Um, then Mackenzie Mitchell interviewed Mercedes Martinez and then was informed that Zaya Lee and Boa will face Martinez and a partner for choosing. And then Martinez goes, I didn't make a lot of friends, but I'm cool with that. They want to go to war. Zaya Lee attacks um, Mercedes Martinez from behind. And then Boa started talking trash. And then Jake Atlas, God bless his heart, kicked Boa in the face. He says, well, you just got yourself a match. And then he helped him out. I guess we'll even up score. So it will be Jake Atlas and Mercedes Martinez versus Zia Lee and Boa of Tiancha. It seems like, I don't know if Mei Ying's going to cause some trouble. I'll tell you one thing right now. Got to respect Jake Atlas, man. All right. I know it's Pride Month, but no. And speaking of Pride Month, if um, I'll pick a singer, um, Elton John. My favorite Elton John song, Little Genie. That's Little Genie, you got so much love. That's, that's a catchy song, you know. Elton John comes from Elton John comes up Sir I mean see Sir Elton John, excuse me, he's been knighted by the Queen. He comes up with some cool catchy songs and uh Little Genie happened little genie had every one of them. And then the charger again, up to fifty one percent and all that. Who is behind that charger thing? Another promo. What's going on? Don't know. Then then they had the dream matchup. Kushida Kyle Riley non title matchup. It was a hard fought matchup. Uh it was a great matchup. Kyle O'Reilly won in the matchup. And then Adam Cole attacks Kyle O'Reilly again. The two started brawling. It got to the point where security was out. Samoa Joe says, get at him. Get at him. Separate him. Calm him down. And Samoa Joe, I'll tell you one thing. Samoa Joe, head of security, enforcer. Gotta love it, right? But meanwhile, while that craziness was going on, Kushida was getting attacked in the ring by a hooded figure. Who was that hooded figure? Roderick Strong. He's back. What in the world's going on? And then we saw Tyler Russ in a... Well, I said some, there's a Japanese dude, but we found out the Japanese dude's name. Hideki Suzuki. He was signed on to NXT. He was originally signed on as a coach, but maybe an active superstar, he could still go. Gotta love that, right? But we come to find... We, and we see Malcolm Vivens, and guess what? The Diamond Mine finally made their debut at the end of NXT. It was a shock indeed. Um... So the Diamond Mine will be Hideki um, Suzuki, Tyler Rust, and being led by Roderick Strong and Malcolm Vivens as their manager. Wow. i tell you one thing. Everyone wants to know what this um, um, Diamond Mine was all about. And we uh, found out that it was, you know, and everybody was saying, you know, everybody thought it would be Tessa Blanchard. And everybody thought it would be um, Roderick Strong and, uh, and Marina Shafir. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Marina Shafir makes her debut alongside them. I'll tell you what, the Diamond Mine, I think this is going to be, that's one another faction coming in there. A lot of factions coming. You got the Way, you got Hit Row, and you got the Diamond Mine. It's going to be very interesting to see what has happened. And um, 
uh, w what has happened and what's going to lead up to the Great Amer American Bash. I would not be surprised if Kushida decided to defend the Cruiserweight title against Roderick Strong. But now, you know, you're talking about, you you, you know, you guess, you know, if you think about it, you know, Diamond Mine, you think Malcolm Bivens has got Tyler Rust who calls, call, uh, who Malcolm Bivens calls the Diamond and the Rust, and you think about it. So, Hideki Suzuki, I'm curious of what he, has Hideki known things about, and you know, he didn't attack uh, Kushida, and neither did Tyler, uh, Tyler Rust. It would, only Roderick Strong got, you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what this Diamond Mine will be all about in this group. So, can't wait for that, all right? So, that's all the time we have on the show. I figured, you know, uh, I figured you guys want to know what's up. So, Von Baskin, your answers are, um, your questions are answered about the Diamond Mine. But now we got this Charger thing going on. Who is behind that? We don't know. We don't know. Is, and we're trying to find out, you know, recently signed superstars, recently released superstars. I don't know. Will be uh, will be an NXT superstar being repackaged? Who knows for sure? We don't know. I don't know. We'll find out in the weeks to come. Will that person debut at the Great American Bash? We don't know who this individual is. But one thing's for sure: NXT is getting hot, man. Let me tell you, it is getting hot. And and uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, so everybody should be watching NXT. It's gonna be great. All right, we know AEW is not on tonight, unfortunately, but Saturday night NXT will not NXT AEW will be on. I'm gonna watch that to see what the heck is going on. We know we got a championship matchup. Um, the son of the late great um, Luke Perry, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, will be challenging Kenny Omega for the AEW championship. I would not be surprised if Sammy Callahan will probably sneak in somewhere and make things worse because Don Callis has been fired by the, as v, EVP of Impact Wrestling. This is a good thing for Impact Wrestling. But I'll tell you one thing: Sammy Callahan is going to make make Don Callis' life miserable because Kenny Omega is the T, um, the TNA Impact World Heavyweight Champion as well. So, bear that in mind. That's all the time we have on the show. The NXT Event Center for June the twenty second, two thousand twenty one. Um, what's gonna What's gonna go on next? Who knows for sure. Well, got to go. And on the next episode, three twenty. Press your luck. Miami Wednesday. Gonna do some gameplay. Mm. Thank God for new Dunoran, man. All right. I'll see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. And until the next episode, peace out. Bless out. <laughs>